Well, welcome to 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and today we're going to be talking about shamanism. For the moment, we're just going to do a short meditation, and uh, those of you who've been with me, you know the routine. Um, those of you who are with me for the first time, what we're going to do is um, we're simply going to divert our attention inwards. It's so basically the best way to meditate is if we do our meditation as effortlessly as possible. So, and because meditation is a very natural state that we have inherited since childhood and it always happens. We've always done meditation in our lives. And it takes different and various forms, but it's something that is not foreign to us. It's something that we've done before. It's just putting it in the right frame and content, making it much easier to understand. So simply without putting much attention, you turn your attention inwards and look for the source of your thoughts. As you turn your attention inward, you look for the watcher, the witness within yourself, the one who is aware of your thoughts and your emotions. And you bring your attention to that source. And as you do that, you, can, you will experience silence. Everything becomes very quiet, effortlessly, without trying to make something happen. So let's do that. Simply divert your attention inward towards the source of your thoughts. Take a deep breath and relax. Now, without trying, doing a mantra or visualization, no effort, without trying anything. Simply, as you have your attention on the source of yourself, you will begin to see that gradually everything becomes very quiet and calm. You may still hear your thoughts, the body sensations, but that's fine. You are awareness and you are aware of activities. But now you're bringing your attention on the source of yourself. You're bringing your attention on awareness itself, not what you are aware of. So take another deep breath and relax into this place. And simply allow movements to, to be, to happen. Whether a thought is moving through your mind or you're having some sensations in your body, just let them be. You're simply aware. Just allow things to move through without resisting them or entertaining them. Let thoughts come and go. Your emotions, let them come and go. Don't resist them. Simply allow Just allow things to come and they're welcome to go. As you're in this relaxed meditative state, a unified field, an energetic field begin to reveal itself surrounding you and giving you access to itself. Now 
You may experience energy movement in your body or in your hands or feet. Temperature changes, it may get hot or cold, or just feeling very relaxed, cozy, and warm. Just allow this energy to reveal itself. And swim in it and drink from it. And as you are in this state of meditation, I would like you to imagine, visualize that there's a light appearing from the very spine, very bottom of your spine, there's an appearance of a golden light, starting this light beginning to move from your sacrum. Slowly the light is moving up through your spine, connecting all your chakras with each other. And just feel the movement of this light. It's like the awakening of the snake, the Kundalini energy. And you can visualize and feel it that it's awakening from this, your sacrum and energy in the form of light is gradually moving up in your spine, going through your lower back, coming to the middle section of your back, And it's gradually moving up to your neck. Feel the energy moving. Feel the sensations of the light. And slowly the light moves up and comes, takes over your head, fills up your entire body and shoots out to the sky. Now I would like you to visualize that this light from your sacrum is going down through your feet and connecting your body to the earth and it's going from below, it goes to the center of the earth. And from above, it's connecting you to the space. So now you're just a conduit of this light traveling through you. I would like you to take a deep breath as you're taking, as you're inhaling, pull in the light from the center of the earth into your body. And as you exhale, shoot it out to the space. And try it one more time, take a deep breath. Pull the light into your body from the center of the earth, going through your, connecting all your chakras with each other and shoot it out. 
from top of your head, from the crown chakra to the sky, to the space. Now I would like you with the next breath that you take a deep breath, I would like you to see that this light has turned into warm liquid and it's love. It's hot, it's warm, it's comforting and it's full of love and acceptance. And if you as if you're taking a deep breath, inhaling, pull in this energy of love and light into your body. And this powerful, loving, divine light energy that's coming through you is healing and transforming every cell of your body and it's rejuvenating you in the very core of your being. And as, as you are exhaling, this, this loving energy is shooting out to the space and spreading out all over the cosmos. And now you're simply a conduit of this love and light energy traveling through you with every breath you take. I would like you to feel the presence of this powerful love energy, the presence of the spirit in your being right now, the presence of her majesty, the supreme soul, the love of God. Pure love and acceptance and no judgment. Take a deep breath and fill up your entire body with this love energy. And hold this energy in your body. See yourself swimming in it floating in it. See yourself that it fills you up. It surrounds you. It dances around you. And you're swimming in it. And slowly, slowly, you're going to lose any kind of sensation of a physical body and lose your boundaries of a human body into pure love and presence. You begin to experience a complete expansion You are no longer a human being separated. Your pure divine oneness, totally connected with everything else. So it sort of feels like disintegrating into the oneness and reintegrating by 
simply shifting your attention and bringing our attentions to the source of ourselves or what happens is you simply go beyond your thoughts and you tap into this unified field of oneness you tap into the presence the presence of yourself which is always here and it's quiet okay so as i mentioned earlier i today i'm going to talk about shamanism the um the word shamanism uh originally it's a siberian word and it's it means consumed by fire and we all have heard about shamanism. A lot of us do practice uh, shamanic sham shamanism. We've been exposed to shamanic work here and there, and it's becoming more popular as uh, the global emergence. And the fact that the information is more available and we can connect with each other through internet. So a lot of uh information that previously was not available now it's becoming available and revealing itself um basically a shaman is like a bridge uh, when we do uh get involved in sh shamanic work is shamanism is a person who has bridge the physical world to spiritual world and is able to derive the information from the spirit world and origin if you trace back uh, and look into your uh, families um, trees and check check to see i guarantee you that you're gonna find one of the elders if you don't have anyone in your family who is into shamanic work but you will find that your grandmother your grandfather or their parents uh or someone in your tribe your family at one point was doing shamanic work so uh or the village or the, the village that your family used to live in, the tribe that they were a part of, they had shaman in it. And uh, when we do get involved in shamanic work and shamanism doesn't really have a certain type of a look. Um, you could, for example, um, have develop your shamanic abilities but you're working in an office you're doing um i don't know you're working a uh, you work as an accountant and you work in an office but you have shamanic abilities or you may be working as a nurse and you have shamanic abilities um the, sh the shamanic work is not limited and it's not that if your profession is something which really involves you to be uh, attentive to worldly things, uh, that doesn't mean that you can't be a shaman or you don't have the abilities or you can't do your practice. They're not separated. In the past, I used to think that to do shamanic work, then I have to give up everything else that I do. And um, I can't be a truck driver, I can't be an insurance agent, I can't be a dad, I cannot be a mom uh, or um, work in a platform or be working in a, in a hospital or in a factory or whatever 
and that's going to contradict my shamanic work. But that's not true. When you tap into your shamanic aspects, you will see that eventually you can bring your wisdom and the information that you're receiving from the spirit world to the physical world. And it doesn't matter what kind of work you do or what kind of environment you're in. It's, we have uh, evolved and now the, uh, we've, there is the modern shaman. The modern shaman may is also one who's a shapeshifter and it could be doing anything or it can look like anything, but yet is capable of practicing shamanism. And that doesn't also pertains into doing some shamanistic rituals. You can incorporate your shamanic work uh, into any type of rituals that you're used to doing or you find suitable. So a lot of people think that in order to do your shamanic uh, rituals, you have to be dressed up um, in a certain way. You need certain tools to do that and you have to be in the nature or you need some kind of medicine to be able to tap into your shamanic aspects. But my experience is that none of it uh, is really true. You, once you dive into it and you start to explore yourself and your abilities as you become more comfortable with yourself you begin to see that shamanism can be practiced easily in the modern world and it doesn't have a look and it doesn't require any kind of tools or it's not limited to medicine. You don't have to have any sort of medicine. There is different levels of shamanism and shamanic practice, of course. For example, like in the Amazons uh, or, you know, different tribes from Native Americans to uh, South American shamans or uh, Middle East or African shamans. Uh, or European shamans. Uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, what tribe you come from or from what region you are or what color or religion, ba religious background you have. But for example, I'm just going to be using, let's say, the in the Amazons back in the day. Like what would the shaman do? What was the role of the shaman? The shaman who is also being viewed as the medicine man or medicine woman of the tribe. Uh, one of the things, for example, they may uh, be doing is maybe they're using a certain kind of medicine and they're using this medicine in order to open their third eye, in order to get the vision of the hawk. And to be able to elevate themselves into this other level, to be able to see uh, life and see the events uh, from a different perspective and to be able to predict and get an idea of what is coming. And uh, for example, like, uh, as I mentioned, the Amazonian shamans, they would use uh, ayahuasca and they would use that in order to be able to 
get visions of where the game was to have vision of where they have to go in order to be hunting, uh, where they can find food, or how they can connect to plant medicine, and what sort of plants are needed, uh, herbs are needed in order to, for either food or for healing purposes, making teas, making medicine out of them, um, what sort of plants we can use to use as antibiotics or and uh, antifungus or viral, as well as getting an idea of which direction the tribe needs to go because a lot of the tribes that had to move from one area to another area. There is also shamanic rituals uh, in different uh, regions that they are through their rituals uh, back in the day they would say to keep the evil spirit away. Of course, back then they were using different kind of words, calling evil spirit, or um, but it's basically it it's uh, it was to create a force field and generating an energy field to keep the tribe safe and to bring wisdom and light to the tribe, so the members of the tribe would choose correctly and they would not be going in the wrong direction to get themselves into trouble. Now back in the day, of course, there was a lot of different elements that you had to fight against. Uh, the weather was one of the biggest elements. And of course, they had to be concerned about food and their own safety. Today, we there's a lot of different things that we don't have to worry about. Food is readily available. Uh, we don't really need so much to worry about the weather as in the past we had to. Um, we have housing, we have air conditioning, we have heat, we have good roads, we have uh, communication and transportation. So there's certain things we don't really need to concentrate on or worry about that hundred or two or three hundred years ago, they had to worry about. But now we have our own challenges in a different way. And one of the biggest um, challenges that these days we face is that information overload. That there's too much information and we're constantly being bombarded by electromagnetic waves. And that throws, could possibly throws us off and throws, off, throws us off balance and create a lot of confusion in our energy field and nervous system. So, The modern shaman, by doing and developing their sh shamanic um, practices and, and developing their abilities, is capable of elevating themselves to this higher level of consciousness of clarity to become more clear, to become a more clear conduit of the divine light and to be able to derive information and translating this information into a understandable language that a language that we can communicate and a language that is useful for us by bringing this information 
because there are times that we may be receiving information, but we're not able to transmit it and translate it. So, and that has happened to maybe many of you before that you have received the information in the past, but you may not know how to translate it or how you can transmit it and how you can apply it to your everyday life. And um, so one thing that I've experienced with the, uh, in the modern day is this aspect of confusion of being for a lot of people being confused regarding that how they can develop their shamanic abilities but then what it does is there's a contradiction with and maybe uh, some certain levels of guilt or uh, confusion about okay, well, I'm doing my practices and I'm developing my abilities, but now I don't want to live in a city and I don't want to deal with any people and I just want to go live in the woods or I want to live in the suburb or I, I want to be living in a farm and I don't want to have to do, have anything to do with the system. And I've come across a lot of healers, channelers, uh, light workers, um, and I was one of them that I thought by developing my abilities, I need to disconnect from the world. And I don't want to live in a city. I don't want to deal with people. I don't want to deal with money. I just want to do my work. I want to be in the nature. And um, and I was assuming that that's a harmonizing life, that that's the way that it needs to be. But somehow existence forced me to be involved and forced me to um, live in a city, uh, be worldly, have to use my business mind, have to deal with numbers, have to deal with money, have to deal with calculation, have to deal with paying your bills, and um, dealing with internet, dealing with Facebook, Instagram, um, so many different things, creating websites, a lot of uh, different facets of life uh, that if you, unless you're completely uh, isolated yourself and you're living in a farm far away, well, then you have to deal with these things. And here is what I discovered. Um, when you do your shamanic work, and as you're expanding, your consciousness starts to expand and the shamanism is a practice of seeing the larger universe and uh, expanding your consciousness and seeing things beyond ordinary, going beyond the face value of whatever you see. And you're expanding your vision into that. But in the same token, the art of a modern shaman and the talent of a modern shaman is to be multidimensional. And I did talk about multidimensionality before, uh, but being multidimensional, multidimensional is to be able to wearing different hats and to shape shift into different things. 
for example, let's say you're a modern woman and, and you are an executive, you work in an office. So you put your two-piece suit and you go to your office and you power through the work. But afterwards, then you come home and you become a mommy and you're wearing your sweatpants or sweatshirt and now you're completely uh, shape shift into this very sensitive, sensitive, loving, soft mother. And then you have to, you deal with your husband and then you become a wife. And then after that, you go to the gym and you're working out and you become an athlete. So, and then you want to go buy a car and you go to a car dealership and you become a hardcore negotiator and you're negotiating over buying a car and you're trying to bring the price of the car down and by becoming tough. So you are not one dimensional that, hey, I'm just a mom and this is all I am. You're not defining yourself as only one thing. You begin to expand and start to seeing and accepting and, and um, embracing different aspects of yourself. And in the midst of this thing, you're also an artist. Maybe you enjoy fashion. Uh, maybe you, you know, you paint very beautifully or you like to decorate yourself. Um, you know, maybe you're a hairdresser. Maybe you're a musician. Maybe you write poetry. Uh, I don't know, whatever that you may like to do, but you're not defining yourself as only one thing and limiting yourself into just one thing that this is what I am. You begin to explore yourself. And as you're getting older, as you're, your time going and you're putting more numbers on planet of Earth, you're going to move into dif this different uh, stages of life that you're into a different thing. And your desires may change and you're into certain, you know, you may want to go learn karate. Now you may be into doing karate for five years. And then maybe after a while you get tired of that and now you are into swimming or you're into, I don't know, salsa dancing. So you're sh shape shifting from one thing to another, but you're keeping your heart open and you're keeping yourself open to change and going with it and not defining yourself into one thing. Now, shamanism is an ancient universal spiritual practice. It's not pertain to a, it's, shamanism is beyond religion. So if you, you do shamanistic practice, you don't want to confuse it with, with religion because you can have any, you can practice any religion that you want. And that has nothing to do with shamanic work. And that doesn't limit you. So what you want to do is expanding your mind and going beyond this limitations that the mind creates, these definitions that we've been brainwashed and programmed that if you are this thing, you cannot be anything else. And that's only in your mind.
you're a multi-dimensional being capable of many different things. And normally you experience and you see your power and how far you can go is when you're challenged. Life challenges you and puts you in a situation that you're forced to do something that you didn't think you can do or you didn't, you didn't like to do. And quite often when you're forced out of need, being in a situation like that, you'll amaze yourself that you were able to handle something and go beyond your own limitations. The modern shaman has developed itself or it has the willing of developing itself to becoming a complete shapeshifter, being able to wear different hats, being able to receive, being open into receiving information from the spirit world and translating that and incorporating the information into everyday life. And has gone beyond this idea, this imaginary Lim, uh, idea of being limited. And through that, the modern shaman has become the vessel of light. It becomes a conduit of the divine wisdom and energy. So by centering yourself, by coming back into yourself, and like the meditation we did earlier today, is coming to this place of getting out of the way and allowing information to come in, allowing to information to get transmitted. It's interesting when you start to investigate this, and you go uh, deeper and you ask around, uh, you discover that one or more people in your family or in your family tree, at one point they practice shamanism. And um, they have, they've had the abilities or you find people around you that they do have the abilities. But of course, it's not being encouraged. Uh, things are changing these days very quickly, but overall, it's not something that is being acknowledged or encouraged. Uh, there's a lot of fear and doubt and shame around it. But you do find that in your family. As we talked about offering the Sedona activation, um, shamanic activation retreat. And that's going to be from January 4th to 12th. So check-in date is on the 4th, check-out is on the 12th. And uh, uh, we're going to be doing a series of different, um, uh, this, this retreat, uh, it's going to be like 75% of the time we're going to be outdoors because of the nature of Sedona, of how beautiful it is, and the fact that Sedona is a major vortex on this planet. And it's, so uh, my idea was that I like to start the year 2020 with a big bang. And uh, so that's why uh, I couldn't find the location I wanted it for the new year. 
So I thought, okay, then I'm just going to set it up right after the new year. And we, we start uh, the year with this uh, shamanic activation. We will be doing a, a series of different kind of rituals and work. Um, and then again, um, it's going to be Sedona's winter. Sedona's winter is not really harsh. It's not like uh, uh, Scandinavia. So it could be super mild. It, it, it could be rainy or snowy, but normally it, it's not like you're going to have rain or snow for five days in a row. If anything happens, it's a day or two, and then sunshine, sun comes out. Uh, that's been my experience from the years I lived in Sedona. So the plan is to, I'm going to set up the schedule, but it's also going to be flexible. And uh, the stuff that we're going to be doing it with me, I mean, we can move them around. Sometimes I also offering things with other people. Like uh, I like to start the journey with a Native American sweat lodge, which is going to be on the January 5th. Um, those events, I can't move them because it's depending on other people. But um, we will be doing that. We'll be, uh, I'll be taking you to Grand Canyon one day and we're going to do some uh, shamanic rituals in Grand Canyon. Uh, we'll be going to power places. Uh, the, these are power places that aren't on the map, that basically the tourists don't go, don't know about it. These are my power places that I'll be taking you there. Uh, again, um, wh weather permitting, there's going to be some hikes and walks on the land. We're going to do a medicine wheel walk. Uh, we're going to have a workshop with this wonderful friend of mine, uh, Amalia, who was going to do, t uh, do a shamanic dance uh, workshop last year, but she had to leave to Australia. So there's different events that we're going to be doing. There will be some hikes and walks on the land. If that's, I think that's what you're referring to. Hello? Yes, yeah. I'm here. I wasn't sure if you were muted or not. So, but we can talk about it more. I'm, put, I'm planning on putting out the uh, retreat. Hopefully by tomorrow, uh, I'll have it ready and put it up on my website. We've been working uh, at it relentlessly with, my, uh, with uh, Amir, uh, the gentleman who's helping me with my website and and uh, everything else, and we've been working on it to get it get it out. So I'll have the program out hopefully by tomorrow. And uh, the space is limited because uh, uh, I only have space for twelve people. So I uh, found this amazing uh, house. Uh, that's been designed for doing shamanic work and, and workshops. It's called the Lighthouse. And I'll be posting uh, images of the house. So I'm very, very happy with the location that I found. So, but feel free to write to me if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to get back with you. Okay. So it's nice to see you all. If there's any other questions, uh, you can either wave at me or you can just uh, write it on the chat box. Um, if no, I don't hear anything from anyone. Well, it's nice to see you all. Uh, we're going to have uh, next, next Wednesday, we'll have our next academy. I think we have two more Academy uh, scheduled before I leave on my tour. Uh, I'll be heading out to uh, Europe on October 4th, and I'm going to start with uh, Warsaw, Poland. Um, I'll be doing a series of 
events in, in, in Warsaw, and then I head out to Frankfurt, and I know I'm going to see some of you in Frankfurt. Uh, I'll be there for 10 days in Frankfurt. Then I go to Norway. I'll come and see Miss Hilde, and then uh, from Norway, I uh, finish my tour in Sweden. So uh, for more information regarding my tour, the events, early bird prices, uh, the time and the schedule, please uh, refer to my website, zaratustra.tv. And uh, everything you need to know about the tour and, and uh, event descriptions and workshop descriptions, uh, where to, uh, who to contact, um, all the information that you need is on my website. And you're always welcome to write to us um, our new email address is info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, I recently started the podcast and uh, it's under Zaratustra-5D. Uh, if you're inspired, feel free to check it out. Also, we'll send you a copy of recording of this event. Um, and it will be posted on Facebook and my YouTube channel. Feel free to keep in touch. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for having, having me. Namaste. God bless.